So glad you could join us, I guess, the morning after day two. Uh, let's run it back again. I think that's what our friends with Visit Detroit and the Detroit Sports Commissioner are calling it. Uh, really looking forward to day two of the draft. My pal, uh, Matt Shepard, uh, kindly joining us. Shep, what an unbelievable night last night was. I'm not even talking about the draft yet. Let's not even talk about the draft. Yeah. Some of those images were were breathtaking. I was in awe. There, right? You were down there. Tell me what it was like. I mean, tell me the vibe and the feel you had because you and I have covered a lot of big events. And I've mm-hmm. said this about Detroit. I think Detroit is underrated when it comes to hosting events. At Ryder Cups, Frozen Fours, NCAA Championships, Grand Prix, NBA, NHL Championships, Super Bowls, All-Star Games. The vibe is different. But I, it, it sure looked different from where I was watching it. 275,000 people. What was your feel? I was a few miles away. Uh, you know, we were at Batch. Had a great time at Batch Brewing, by the way. And go out there. It's just a cool vibe and everything. But what was interesting, Shep, is we had, you know, a lot of people that are, were already out there watching. And then about a half hour, maybe 45 minutes before the draft, more people started filtering in. Well, why were they filtering in at that late juncture? Because they tried to get down to the hub. They tried to get down to the Campus Martius area. And, and for people out there that don't know this, they literally had to close the entrances. They could not let any more people in. I mean, that's how unbelievably packed it was. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double on, on what you just said. This city the organizing committees, whether it be Visit Detroit, whether it be Detroit Sports Commission, the work that they put into this and to pull it off the way they did was incredible because let's be honest, the elephant in the room, how many people heard something along these lines? We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the area. We can't do this. We can't do that. And they found a way. I mean, period, end of story. It was fascinating to me, Shep, and, and, and maybe I'm, I'm turning into a homer with something like this. How many people last night, and in particular this morning, were talking about how crazy it was and how Detroit showed up? And I, I, I laughed to myself and I said, where have you been? Right. With okay. this, is, this, Shep, you know as well as anybody, okay? I, it, you and I have been down there so many times. People, you know, remember you called exhibition games for this team, preseason games for this team. I did the pregames, post games, forever TV radio. This fan base has been almost one hundred percent unwavering in their support for this franchise. And if we're being honest, it's a little easier to say it now. Okay, even during the times when there were bumbling management and bumbling coaches. These fans show up. And and to me, it's like, where have you been? We have been supporting this franchise since forever. Yeah, why does it surprise people? You're right. It's a good point. 275,000 for day one on record. I heard someone from the Lions, um, so somebody, an, an inside source said, when they were th- first talking about it, the NFL said, no, we need 40,000 a minimum of 40,000 to attend the event. And the Lions basically laughed. And they said, oh, what are you kidding me? We'll get that, we'll get that for, for day three. Yeah. Wait till you see what happens. I don't care who you are or what sport you follow. If you're the NFL, you see that type of passion. I, I want you to think about it for a second. You go down there. I get why you go down there. Great food, great beer. At, at Batch, who wouldn't want to go there, right? People mm-hmm. want to go down there, the vibe. People are 275,000 in that throng there. What do you see? A guy walk up, maybe, maybe your guy, because not everybody was there. Maybe your guy walk up there, put on a hand, hug a commissioner, fake like you like him, and say hello to the crowd. That's yep. it. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's how thirsty they are. For successful sports team. If you're a Minnesota fan, and, and that, the beauty of Detroit was that you can drive from Cincy and Cleveland and Pittsburgh, Chicago, Indianapolis, and there's a few other places, even Green Bay if you wanted to. A number of very well located for a lot of different fan bases, but let's face it, most of those are Lions. 
And there was that rumor that they may trade out. Obviously, it didn't happen, but that was the possibility. Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes, all put people on notice. It's a possibility. And they still showed up. But, I mean, if you didn't feel any pride last night, I don't know when you're going to feel it. Man, the city looked great, Shep. This is such a great time of year. It, it, it really is. And I, I'm with you. Um, I, I look back at so many of these big events, and this is a city that finds a way to come together and pull these babies off time and time again. It was just a very, very memorable, memorable night. And it was, a, as I said, it, it's, it's kind of funny. Let's run it back again. Detroit seems to be the theme for today, our friends from Detroit Sports Commission visit Detroit, and I don't know how you could top that. I think, yeah. Shep, there are going to be a lot of people out there, and I know friends of mine that said, okay, now I just want to go to be part of it. You know, so don't be surprised if you don't see, I'm not going to say 275 k again, but don't be surprised if you don't see a heck of a lot of people down there in the same rule supply. Know before you go, get the NFL one pass, be, be, you know, aware of what's happening. But Shep, that was amazing that they literally had to close the entrances down there. Man, if that doesn't tell you how fired up people are in this town for our Lions, nothing will. Yeah, it's incredible. It really is. I mean, for, and it doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter the economic background. It doesn't matter. Whether you were an athlete or not, people are going down there. I had a friend tell me yesterday, he's like, yeah, I, my wife and I are going down there. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I mean, it's going to be tough. You know, there's going to be a lot of people down there. He said, yeah, she really wants to go. I said, well, what about you? He says, no, one way or the other, I, I'd be fine just watching it at home. But my wife really wants to go. I mean, they have caught people's attention. Not that they didn't before, right? But just to, like you said, to be part of it, I think there's a lot of pride involved here. I think a no, lot no. of people want to go down there and say, you know what? See, this is what we offer to people. And unless you live here, you don't always know it. Unless you, unless you truly, you know, feel that on a pretty regular basis when the sports are taking place, if you're an outsider, you're surprised. If you're a, if you're a Michigander, you're like, yeah, this doesn't surprise me at all. I knew this was going to happen. Isn't that funny? You, you brought up something. I'm going to use my own daughter as an example. I, I mean, Shep, listen, my daughter, Lauren, she just doesn't care about sports. I think it's great. Like, sometimes I, I watch her and go, I wonder how much easier my life would be if, if I had her mentality towards things, yeah. right? Right, yeah. You, because, you know, all these gray on top of my head, 98.2% of them come from watching my sports teams. But it was funny. Yesterday afternoon, she said to me, she was like, Dad, can I go down with you? And I was like, of course you can. Of wow. course. There are people like Lauren. Now, in fairness to her, she does enjoy hockey. That's about it. But there are people like Lauren and the people that you described that they just wanted to be there. They wanted to be part of it. They wanted to go down and feel the vibe, whether it be at Batch, whether it be in Campus Martius. And it really was an event that brought everybody together. And, and, the cool thing about an event like this, man, especially the older I get, Shep, and if, if people want to say I'm getting soft, then, then so be it. I couldn't care less. The smiles. I'm a guy. I love to see smiles, Shep. And all these people in the crowd with big smiles on their face and having a great time and forgetting about their job situation or what the hell's going on in our country or the world or whatever the case may be. People had big crap eating grins on their face yeah. i'm sorry i'd love to see that today i love it too man i, I love when people are happy i love the, the show of emotion the show of pride all the things you're talking about i i think it's i think it's what you know people want to go down there they want to be seen they want to feel the vibe and they want to be able to say i was there yep you know and i would argue this and we just mentioned all the big events Detroit has held or Metro Detroit has held because, you know, one of those NBA finals or a couple of the NBA finals obviously were in Dallas of Auburn Hills. The Ryder Cup was in Berkeley. But still, you, you got to have the, the hotel capacity. You were saying all the things that the national media were worried about. Do they have this? Question mark. Are they good enough to do this? Question mark. Obviously, all those questions were answered, right? And it just shows you that what we've known all along is justified. We knew all along that this would be something that Detroit could pull off and do it 
with not just high expectations locally, but nationally, anybody, any national player person who comes to Detroit for this event, and it's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest events Detroit's had, don't tell me you don't leave there and go, you know what? Good for them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Did a real yeah. nice job. You yeah. know, it's, it's nothing but positives. Nothing Shep, but- Shep I, I was going to ask you this, but you led me right into it. Lynn said you were a softy, Sean. Absolutely I am. Oh, I openly admit it. Oh, the, the guy who used to rant and rave and become a lunatic. Oh, no. I, I want happy now. Uh, but no, uh, all jokes aside, Shep, was this the biggest event we've had? I mean, think about it. I mean, some of those crowds for the Grand Prix have been unbelievable. Can't say enough about, you know, what Bud Danker and, and Penske has done for that. The Ryder Cup was incredible. This is probably the tops, right? I think so. Look, the Super Bowl is fantastic. Here, here's the difference. The weather would really cooperate. Yep. So that helps. Yep. yep. Planning. The anticipation of it all, the fact that, you know, you had so many big names, offensive big names, like, let's face it, the Ryder Cup, and I covered it. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. The whole buildup, huge event, you know, international event. For the most part, people are going, you're, you, wanna, you really want to love golf, right? Yeah. Everybody loves golf. So I get that. But same thing with the Stanley Cup Finals and NBA Finals. Those are primarily two cities. This is not just narrowed down to two city, a Red Wing fan base and a Pittsburgh fan base, right? Or a Piston fan base and a Lakers fan base. That's not what it is. So I think, yeah, I, I think this is probably the biggest event. And I'm excited for the rest of the weekend just to see how much more it's a tent. And I'm excited for the post draft feedback that Detroit's yeah. going to get. I yep. really am. On top of that, Sean, I think it's awesome, too, that Detroit moved up. They got a really good player, and yeah. I know why. I know why people are loving them. And, and look, I, I it's not that I love the draft. I do enjoy it. I think it's. I think day one's a little long. Okay, eight eight to midnight past midnight. I think is ridiculous, but I do enjoy it. I I hate the Super Bowl more just be, from the standpoint of you know, everybody wants to see who's singing at halftime in the commercials more than. But I do believe the NFL. This is another indication, Sean, of. NFL, everything they touch turns to gold. Yeah. All the things that they do and how they keep you and I talking about the NFL on a week to week basis. Cause something, if it's not the draft, it's the combine. If it's not the combine, it's the Super Bowl, it's the playoffs, it's the races, it's the, the even during the bye week, it's, you know, it's the, uh, uh, the, the pro days, it's, it's the OTAs, it's the rookie camps, it's the mini camps. They know exactly what they're doing. And yep. it's, it shows off again last night how great it was. The only thing I, the whole hugging of the commissioner just gets to me once in a while. Okay. I, I, I see. I have something. Gold Cup used to draw upwards of a million people. I, I was down there. That's an incredible event. I used to cover that for WWE yeah. Radio. I did that year after year. Really enjoyed it. A million people. Look, I was at, and 12 in a row. I, I don't recall those types of crowds. It, w- it was crazy busy. Um, you, you know what makes me laugh is the, um, you, you brought up the bro hug with the commissioner. Oh. I, I love the live reaction. I love the live reaction when a team makes their selection and everybody goes crazy. And Did you see how happy Brad Holmes was? Did you see how happy? Of course they're going to be happy. It's the first round of the pick. Do you remember that time where that somebody made a pick and everybody went like this? Like, come on. Of course. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. George, George the Morgan's the Panthers last night. I think a lot of Packer fans were going like this. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. Every single general manager and head coach, when they go live to their reaction, of course you're going to be happy. You don't want them slamming the phone and saying, I guess we had to settle for Brian Calhoun. Yeah. <laughs> David said, yep, hugging the commissioner is getting old and uh, stupid. It is terrible. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it, everybody knows it's staged, Sean. Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he hugs them like they just come, came back from Afghanistan, and they're all in one piece. And you're like, come on, give me a break, man. In, in a year and a half, you're going to join the rest of the NFL players and say, 
that guy makes too much money. He doesn't give us enough respect. We deserve a share of the pie. And why can't we bet on games when the NFL makes all the money up? That's what's going to happen. So yeah. it's just one night. It's just it's crazy. Yep. Um, I, I want to get to the, the selection of Arnold. And, and again, yeah. we I've talked about this for months. You are out of your mind if you try to figure out what Brad Holmes is going to do. You are. I mean, this was an exercise in futility, especially with them picking later in the draft. You know, even as late as yesterday, somebody asked me, texted me in the afternoon, what do you think Brad Holmes is going to do? And I said, point blank, I have no idea. He could move up. He could move out. He could stay there. He could take an edge. He could take a DB. And I want a general manager like that. Don't get me wrong. I want a general manager, not not a guy like, mm, I don't know, say Matt Millen that, that was sending out, you know, smoke signals to people for a year, you know, the months leading up to it, telling everybody he was going to take. He wasn't exactly the most elusive cat. Before we get into that, though, Shep, you are a smart man. You are a fair man. Can you explain the Michael Penix to Atlanta thing? I heard a theory that that I'd like to share with you, but from moment one, and this is nothing against Michael Penix. This is Michael Penix to Atlanta. Why? Is, is there something that I'm missing? Because I'm somebody, I like to look at things from all angles and say, maybe I'm not accounting for this, or maybe I'm not accounting for that. That was a jaw dropper to me at that point with that team for them okay. to go with Michael Penix. It, it was, was a jaw dropper. Was it a draw drop dropper because it was Penix because it was a quarterback because it was that early or all the above? Um, the quarterback, I am a firm believer. I've said this for years. Nobody should be surprised ever. Period. End of story. Teams are going to go get quarterbacks. For me in particular, it was Michael Penix and it was Atlanta. It was two out of those three. And as Meatloaf once said, Two out of three ain't bad, but it was those two, Shep, that kind of, more in particular, the Atlanta thing. Why did Atlanta, who just took Kirk Cousins, okay, paid him, you know, that that big contract, why did they select Michael Penix Jr.? Here's, here's my guess, and, and I'm not saying I know Arthur Blank and what's going on in the Falcons front office. It's probably something you've already contemplated, so I don't think I'm telling you anything new. So they signed Kirk Cousins to a four-year, $180 million deal. I think $90 million is guaranteed guess is that for the first two years are guaranteed the guess is that they see him as a two-year starter for them michael Penix, they don't want to have happen to them what happened with matt ryan and they didn't have the backup ready they didn't have the next guy in line somebody not everybody's boards are the same right somebody had him rated higher than most and I think it just goes to show you that six quarterbacks taken in the first 14 picks, first 14 picks, all offensive players, 23 offensive players overall, the most in the three. It tells you that how desperate, how, how longing teams are for quarterbacks. You and I have talked about this yep. before. There aren't that many great quarterbacks. There are not 15 great quarterbacks in the world. There aren't. There might be 10, maybe 11. But you're talking about 15. That's not even half the league. Then you look at how many backups. You find me 64 really good quarterbacks, and I'll tell you you're lying. Yep. I think, I think Atlanta looks at certain things, and they're like, wow, who's, who are these backups? Jameis Winston's a backup, right? I mean, uh, Minshew's a backup. That's why Teddy Bridgewater was a good signing last year. You've got to have that next guy. And they see Michael Penix as the next guy in life. Where they had him on his board, I don't know. I thought it was too high. Who did they think was going to take him? But that's their only pick in the first round. If I'm Kirk Cousins, if I'm the Falcons, I'm thinking, man, you want to, so many people want to win for today. But at least the Falcons are thinking ahead. If it's the right guy, then great for them. If it's not, shame on them. But they're, they're thinking ahead. And it's tough to blame them for that. That was exactly what my thought was, Shep, is, is, this is a guy that they they took him knowing full well, in all likelihood, he's not going to play until 2026. And I'll echo, I don't know if you remember this, we were doing a draft show years ago with our mutual friend, the late Drew Sharp, and yep. it was the 2011 draft, and, and Christian Ponder. Do you remember? Out of yep. nowhere, Christian Ponder ended up going, and that allowed Nick Fairley to kind of fall into the laps of, of the Detroit Lions that particular year. Yeah. And, 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 and I, and literally, I remember saying that, Shep, that's 13 years ago now. I remember saying to people, 
we shouldn't be surprised that somebody goes up and grabs a quarterback. The premium has been on quarterback for a long time. I thought there to that team was a head scratcher, but but it, it's funny that you brought up the scenario. That was the only thing that I came up with, okay? We okay, are going to take the guy you, for a couple of years, and then he's ready to go. Right. I'm going to give you one more that surprised me, maybe even more. Okay. That was the, the Ricky Pearsall wide receiver from Florida to San Francisco at 31. Yeah. Mitch, Mitchell was still there. Makaki was still there. Most people had those two wide receivers rated higher than Ricky Pearsall uh, out of Florida. So, you know, it just goes to show you the whole, that's why all these boards are different. Yeah, it, it is. It is amazing. Uh, you, this is where, Shep, I say this all the time. You have to trust your scouting staff. And listen, it's not that long ago around here. I, I get it. Everything that Brad Holmes does now is going to elicit, oh, my gosh, that's brilliant. That was great. But listen, not that long ago around here, you had a lot of people last year saying, what the hell is this guy doing? Exactly. 100%. That's just the way it is. Uh, Tim said, other than Steve Young and Aaron Rodgers, who were really successful transition quarterbacks? Are you talking about guys that kind of waited in the wings? Uh, you know, that was kind of the routine. I remember when I was younger, uh, Shep, Danny White kind of sat there on a shelf for years under Roger sure Stop. Sure did. But Danny he, White was, he he was a pretty before. good quarterback. I thought I thought he was a pretty good quarterback. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, you know, there's, I wouldn't say Jeff Hoffler, Jeff Hoffstedler waited in the wings for the Giants, but he did play behind Phil Sims. I don't think they were grooming them, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at Love right now in Green Bay. They, they let him sit for a while. Yeah, it can backfire on you too, folks. I mean, Sean, it wasn't long ago. People were really fired up that the Packers drafted Trey Lance and they thought he was going to be out. Well, Kirk Cousins was a backup in Washington, if you recall. Yeah. Bob Griffin the third. They took both yep. those players in the same draft. I think there's plenty of guys who, you know, once Tom Brady, <laughs> he waited in the wings, right? They drafted him. Just because they weren't a first round pick doesn't mean that you can't use that pick or have that guy wait in the wings and kind of nurture, uh, get nurtured by the starting quarterback and the offensive coordinator and, and have it pay off for you. Those are good examples. Remember, Steve Young also went to the USFL. Yeah. And, and he was sitting behind and he did start in, in Tampa. Then he was support, he was forced to play back up to one of the greatest quarterbacks, if not the greatest quarterback of all time, Joe Montana. Yeah. I think there's probably big examples like that. And that was still the strangest year, that 92 Frisco team with like Joe Montana standing on the sideline. It, it was it was just so weird because I like he was one of those guys that I hated. And then you kind of got to the point you're like, okay, I can't deny his greatness anymore. And and you know, people forget he kind of sat that year on the sideline before he went on to Kansas City and finished his illustrious career there. I want to get really go ahead. Too really. Oh yeah. Oh, he um, was. I, I'll, I'll never forget that game that he Monday Night Football him oh. uh, and the Chiefs against uh, Elway and the Broncos. It was phenomenal. I'll give you one more example. You know of the of those backups. I think John Elway was a backup to Steve DeBerg for a little bit first entered the league uh, in Denver. So there, there is, I think there's plenty of examples of guys kind of, you know, cutting their teeth as backups to start. I'm still waiting for Steve DeBerg to make one more comeback. I, I mean, that, that guy just would not go. He was Keith Richards. I mean, he just kept, he, he, how many times did we see that? Hey, there's DeBerg. You know, DeBerg's getting another shot. It was amazing. I want to get your thoughts on Arnold and, and, and what the Lions did. Let me tell you about our friends at Legacy Partners. It was great to see them yesterday. Uh, saw Dave and Alex came out and, and got a chance to meet uh, another one of their partners, Nolan. And did you know that thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance? Some of you have already done it. I really appreciate you doing it. And most importantly, you appreciate the guys at Legacy. Why? They can help you with your home and auto insurance. They are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents and provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large and small. They have helped our listeners, yeah, true story, by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get you the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. Oh, yeah, and save you some money. Get your quote. It doesn't hurt you in any way, shape, or form. And if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're probably paying too much and you could be underinsured. Enter Legacy 
partners. Give them a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, your business insurance needs. Just get your quote. Call them today, 586-209-4106, or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quote. Those guys, uh, great to see them yesterday, Shep. They came out. Uh, enjoyed the day. I know Dave in particular, uh, the big, big New England Patriot fan, wasn't real happy about Drake May. At really? Why is that? To be about that. I didn't get a chance to talk to him much about it. I, I think he had his heart and, and mind being a University of Michigan alum set on a guy by the name of J.J. McCarthy. Um, you, you know what I think? I, I There are certain guys that get a knock whether they deserve it or not. And Mac Brown quarterbacks get a knock. I think both at Texas and I think now at North Carolina, whether it be Sam Howell and now Derek May. Uh, I had somebody tell me, and I'm not going to mention his name um, because I don't know if he wants me to. I I said Derek May, Drake May, excuse me. I had somebody say to me, um, he doesn't see it with May. Okay. That, that That was what, uh, talent evaluator said to me, he doesn't see it with me. So, uh, but they listen, there's a little magic that dances around when you talk about, you know, a certain Mac Brown quarterback. And, you know, there are guys like that there, they just get their guys going. So, um, JJ McCarthy going in, in the top 10, I said it three months ago. I said it last night. It was going to happen regardless of your personal feelings about him. I think guys around the National Football League knew what was their Shep to the surprise of nobody, in my mind. Uh, J.J. ends up going number 10. I, I've, I had a lot of people tell me oh, it's a perfect fit because of the system. I, I'm not going to claim to know Minnesota system. Uh, I think we have to, we use certain parts of an argument that suit us. So you, I, you brought up a great point. I think it was last week. North Carolina, Duke, places like that. They're seen as basketball schools. They don't trust their quarterbacks, whether it be, as you mentioned, Sam Howell, whether it be Mitch Trubisky, whether it be Daniel Jones, whomever, right? So you get labeled with that. And then you got the Michigan thing with J.J. McCarthy. Well, Tom Brady came from there. Okay, they're not the same, all right? Yeah. He's, he's a different quarterback. I think he's a winner. I think he's shown that he's a winner. It doesn't always translate to the next level, okay? And let's face it, how good are you going to be if you don't have a really good offensive line? How good are you going to be if you don't have anybody who can catch the ball? Ask a lot of young quarterbacks if they don't have that. Don't kid yourself. Tua Tagovailoa got a lot better when uh, you know Tyree Hill got there. Okay, so uh, I, I don't I don't know if we're going to be able to judge these guys right away. And I think sometimes it's a little unfair. Look at and it's probably a bad example. But if, if you look at the kid with the Jets who just got traded, Zach Wilson, who got traded to Denton, the Jets, their, their offense, offensive line was sieve. Bryce Young, look at he, what do you, what do you get sacked, 54 times this year, something like that? That's, that, that's an ungodly amount. When you're constantly running for your life and your eyes are trained to be down, but eventually you have to look in front of you because you've got big 300 pound linemen with bad breath bringing down your neck you're going to get rattled a little bit. Who doesn't? Veterans do, let alone rookies. So, you know, I, I, I just think a lot depends on the situation you're going to. Are you thrust into it right away? It goes back to the Atlanta conversation. It's not necessarily a bad thing that you got a guy who can sit and wait. The perfect scenario is when you can draft a guy and you can still win while he sits and waits like Green Bay did for years. Atlanta's you know- not it's so funny that you bring up Zach Wilson because if, if anybody watched Hard Knocks last year, I mean, the, the soap opera for football fans, let's be honest, that was the storyline, how bad that offensive line was. And they got Aaron Rodgers banged up, obviously. You know, he he blew the Achilles out very early in the season. You're just not going to be successful. I'll go a step further. I'll, I'll, use, I'll use our beloved Jared Goff. Hey, this just in, Jared Goff was not good. Not good at all in his last little bit with the Rams, and he wasn't good early with Detroit. And a huge factor of that, huge factor of that is the guy wasn't being protected. And no, listen, no quarterback likes pressure. I love when this guy excels in pressure. No quarterback likes pressure. 
some quarterbacks handle it better than others. Jared Goff wasn't a guy that handles it. So what happens? You get protection around that guy. You give him a couple weapons. And Jared Goff is the quarterback now that a lot of people envisioned him to be. Right. 100%. Absolutely. He is. I think the difference with that might be, John, is he is. He's a pocket passer through and through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certain young players, certain young quarterbacks, a guy like J.J. McCarthy would be one of them, they can at least get out of the pocket and make something happen on the run. Yes, sir. Okay, so Jared Goff is, but he, he knows who he is. The Lions know exactly who he is. That's the beauty of it, and that's a big reason why they have put such an onus on the offensive line. Their quarterback is not Caleb Williams, he's not Patrick Mahomes, not even Aaron Rodgers. He's a really good quarterback, but he's he's a pocket. Just protect him, and he'll be effective. That was the case. Yeah. Um, this is a really good question. Uh, Tim said, Shep, do you think Terry Bradshaw would be treated as a bust if he was a young quarterback today, given he had, uh, what, six touchdowns, 24 pick rookie year? People we're killing that guy uh, I, that little bit before my time, but I know the stories um, people were killing that guy. I'd be really interested to see how that would play out. Although people forget Peyton Manning had some struggles his, his first year, but uh, Shep would be really yeah, interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. yeah. Peyton Manning through 28 picks is worth yeah. a year. Let's look at that category. It's a great question from Tim. And the answer to that would be yes. I, I because, you have 250,000 experts doing mock drafts mm -hmm. telling what, what should happen. You have social media. You have 24-hour sports where they're breaking down every pick and they would be breaking down every single play that Terry Bradshaw has. You would have ex-quarterbacks like Terry Hanratty getting a TV gig and telling people what Terry Bradshaw should have been doing. So, yeah, you're damn right, I think he would have been labeled an early bust. And it's completely unfair. I think it's completely unfair that people do it today, whether it be Bryce Young or whomever. Now, there are certain guys that you just don't believe in. I, Sean, you and I, neither one of us believed in Desmond Ritter. No mm -hmm. way. Okay? So anything he does from a positive standpoint is great. I, I saw him more as a, as a backup quarterback. Uh, I think there's a place for him in the league, but just not as an everyday starter. I don't know who that is out of this draft, but here's what I, I can promise you this. And, and everybody gets judged all the time. You and I get judged on every show that we do. That's fine. These quarterbacks are going to get judged, but I'm not going to come to a final conclusion until I've watched them in action for a while. 100%. It's just not fair or right. Yeah. Great quote by Jim. Joe Gilliam was the future. Hilarious. Yeah. You know, like look, quarterback after quarterback, who did not pan out, but you don't want to do that after the first year. That's no, awesome. no. And and it's amazing, Shep, you you brought something up. So many of these guys are going to hang on in one way, shape, or form in this league. I mean, Sam Darnold, it seems like, oh, okay, who's he going to play for next year? You know? Okay, he wasn't the savior. Who can forget that first game? I certainly can't. Uh, but this is a guy that's going to kick around the league. He's going to be a backup here, maybe get a chance to start here or there. Uh, what did you think about Arnold, Shep? I don't know about you. The second that it was announced that the Lions were thinking about moving up, I knew exactly who they were going to take. It just made too much sense because um, this is something I don't pretend to know. I'm going to reiterate. I don't pretend to know what Brad Holmes is going to do. But the urgency to move up to 24 and who was sitting out there, it was that perfect world where need and player combined, it doesn't happen all that often or as much as people think. Uh, to myself, I thought to myself immediately, Shep, okay, corner, a guy that quite frankly shouldn't be on the board. This is in all like going to be the pick and it ended up being the pick. Yeah, it, it, it didn't really surprise me, the pick. I, I'm really happy that they got him. I, I didn't think that they were going to try to move up to get you know an edge rusher and Darius Robinson, for example, the, the kid from Canton and who, uh, who started at Missouri and had eight and a half sacks a year ago. Um, I was looking at offensive linemen. Who, who I thought maybe for a second, Graham Barton, the kid out of Duke, mm -hmm. and he went, I think, a couple of picks later. 
Uh, I think my favorite pick might have been uh, the offensive lineman out of Washington, Troy Patano, uh, um, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I took him I think, in 20. But I love the pick, and I think most fans love it. And I think, but we probably love it for different reasons. I think most fans love it because it's a need. Yeah. I love it. I love it because Brad Holmes basically told everybody how high he had this kid on his board. I don't think the Lions were surprised that he was still there. I don't know if he's better than Quinion Mitchell. You know a lot of people at Toledo. I we both know the Mid American Conference. How many wide receivers is he facing? Well, they're probably not throwing his way very much. I know this. When you look at the Lions draft pick and you get this kid in your backfield, he's gone up against some really damn good receivers. And he had the fifth best quarterback rating against in the NCAA this past season at Alabama. When Nick Saban is saying he sits next to him in the film room and his wife thinks he's one of his her favorite players because of his personality and he's got that type of kinetic energy with other members of his team, that tells you an awful lot. Not to mention the fact that the biggest knock on him, Sean, was that sometimes he's too aggressive. I'll take that. Sign me yeah. up every day. I like that. That's the type of guy that they like, Shep. And, and, and I'm with you. I go back to... Um, you have to trust your scouting staff. And if they have this guy so high on their board, absolutely positively you go and make that move. And I I'm going to say it again. If you don't trust Brad Holmes and his staff by now, that's yeah. not his fault. Like, I, I don't know what he has done to earn yeah. the scorn or the, the side eye or whatever you want to give. Um, and, and, Shep, this is where I remind everybody, okay, they didn't get the edge, all right? They, they do really need to get Hutch some help up front. I firmly believe that. I agree with anybody saying that. Did you know? I, listen, I don't know if you know this. Maybe this is breaking news. There are more picks today. No, there are. Are you sure? I, yeah. And, oh, wait, there's more. Here's the Ginsu knife commercial. And if you act now, there's a day three. Stop. Every year, people, I can't believe they don't care about defensive line. And it just bang my head against the wall. It's like, come on, man. There are, there are multiple picks. There's also, after the draft, going out and getting some guys off the scrap heap. And, you know, guys yeah. that are necessarily not stars, but fits and, and, and can come in and provide what you're looking for. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, Shep, it is, it is so cool. As I'm watching a draft, um, and I caught myself doing this last night, I think my body was trained and my brain was trained to just assume the Lions are going to screw up, okay? And, and I hate to be that way, but we saw it so many times. And with Brad Holmes, like, honestly, there is just the utmost confidence that there is competence and, yeah. and that they know what they're doing and having a master plan. And it's so cool to watch a draft through those lenses as opposed to the, you know, some of the drafts we watched of yesteryear. We've never been the envy of anybody. No. And now I get the sense that a lot of people envy the Lions front office and their drafting ability. That's pretty cool. Isn't that awesome? Gosh, that's so awesome. Let me tell you about uh, the awesome, handsome brothers uh, that help us out. Of course, I'm talking about the guys at Wealth Advantage Group. If you are ready to take charge of your financial future you need to look no further than the Hanson brothers the wealth advantage group they are located in historic downtown northville owned by those two fellows right there did i mention they were handsome with over 20 years of industry experience they understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are that's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, already in retirement, doesn't matter. They can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 different states. The investment world is a complex one. So if you're ready to start taking your finances just a bit more seriously, it might be time to work with the experts. Reach out to my friends at the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or visit their website at www.thewealthadb.com. You will be glad you did. He's Matt Shepard. I'm Sean Belegian. 
Uh, Shep, looking ahead, uh, as I said, let's run it back, Detroit. Seems to be the theme from our friends with Detroit Sports Commission and, and Visit Detroit. What are you expecting today? Obviously, a lot of people are saying, well, now Holmes doesn't have a pick in this round and that round. Uh, to that, I say it's Brad Holmes. This is a guy that has shown he will move up and, and move down. Is there anything you're looking for today? Well, they're going to stay, you know, close to their board. You know, they're not, obviously don't have a third round pick uh, because they gave mm -hmm. that up for Dallas. I would love to see them. I, I doubt this guy will be there, but I'd love to see him get a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson. He's the center out of Oregon. I really like him. I think he's a he's a really good player. I'd love to see uh, him in a Lions uniform because I think he can play more than just center. I think he can play some guard too. I I think that would be really big for that. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually went for a tackle and contemplated moving Taylor Decker inside. That might be a possibility. I'm not sure about the wide receivers who are maybe a Zach Frazier from West Virginia. He's another guy. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, your point about the defensive line, there's a kid out of uh, Ohio State, Michael Hall, um, who might not be a bad fit for Detroit. He's more of a DT than an outside edge guy. Um, but you need bodies up there. So my guess is uh, they're going to do something in the trenches, either on the offense or the defensive side. That's what I'd like to see today in the second round. It's going to be interesting because, Shep, as you mentioned, uh, no third round, no fourth round as well. And and I'm, I need to reiterate, that doesn't mean that Brad Holmes isn't going to move back into one of those rounds. I mean, we've seen right. that happen before, and the cost isn't as heavy when you do that. Look, the price of doing business early on, I, I heard some people kind of, I don't want to say complain, I want to say this in a proper context, but bring up that they thought that the price tag to move up to 24 was just a little too steep last night. And I, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand that logic. If you get the guy that like you him. absolutely need, then then I, if you love him that much, go get him. I, I, I don't care if, the, if it means giving up a third round pick, right? Well, I would, uh, the only thing I'd put with that as a little bit of an asterisk is depending on your situation. Mm -hmm. the, folks, the Lions are in a better situation than we've ever had in our lifetime. They don't have as many needs. That's a really good thing. And I'm not saying that you sacrifice all your draft picks. I'm saying it's you're willing to sacrifice one of those draft picks to get the guy who you feel might be part of the solution to get you over the top. Yeah. You can yep. do that. All yep. right. And w let's face it. What do they got? They got, they're going to have two sixes, two sevens. They got a fifth, right? There's five. And then they got the second. You're trying to tell them that you're going to hold tight to two sevens, two sixes, five to get you over the top. Those are usually, not always, but usually used for special teams and depth. Mm -hmm. You get a playmaker like Terry on Arnold. And you get a playmaker possibly in the second round. And I, and don't kid yourself. Offensive linemen could be playmakers, man. Oh, okay. no doubt. That you, you've got to keep them healthy. You've got to keep your quarterback upright. You get two playmakers like that, I, I'd be happy to sacrifice, you know, a sixth or a future fifth or a future fourth for somebody I think is going to be that much of a difference. Maker. Absolutely. Uh, we have just a few minutes left. Uh, can't thank Shep enough. I know it's been a busy last 24 hours for you, pal. So it's, it's great to catch up with you. Um, so many things going on with the Stanley Cup playoffs. I, I think it's been fantastic so far. Uh, any place you want to start? Anything that has jumped out to you? I just, uh, I just love, I love watching Winnipeg and Colorado. Yeah. I, get, I get so fired up watching that series. I just love the speed. I love the grit of Florida and Carolina is what I've noticed. And I don't know if it was you or somebody else I was talking to. Vegas should scare everybody. 100%. They were in Dallas, and they were the better team in both games, and Dallas is really good, man. I'm telling you, it's got this, this Stanley Cup playoffs has everything for it. Granted, Carolina's up 3 nothing after a win last night. They took the heart and soul out of the Islanders when they came from 3 nothing down and scored Game two. Goals, right? Yeah, absolutely. That was... I, I want to get your take on on Vegas because I've heard so many people complain about the way they did their business. And, and and let's be honest, they manipulated the system. And Shep, to that I say, so what? They didn't break any rules. That's I don't care if you put this guy there or that guy there. They, the, the, to me, 
the, the, the general exercise is to put your team in the best position to go make a long run and win a Stanley Cup. And that's exactly what they did. And I know people are weeping and wailing and gnashing their teeth. Well, this guy was on long term. That guy was on low. Oh, it's a magic. It's a magic that they just got back. Shep, manipulating the system, there's nothing new with that. I'm sorry. Sean, what are you supposed to do? If it's a new franchise in a league, how are you supposed to build it? You think you should just do that through the draft and people who got cut? That's not fair either. Now, what was it? Every team could project. What was it, Sean? Eight skaters and a goalie? Or was Mm -hmm. it? Mm-hmm. A little bit less than that. Look, look, whatever the case, they still had to take the right guy and they still had to put him in the right spots. And by the way, can we just say something about Mark Stone? The guy comes back from a lacerated spleen for crying out loud. Pause for a moment for effect. A lacerated spleen mm. scores a goal and blocks a shot. Yeah. It, if that doesn't get you fired up about the type of athletes those guys have and the give a shit effort, the gas level, it's super high with that team. And a lot of it's because of the way that guy leads, right? Eichel's been really good. He was a bad guy in Buffalo. Suddenly he's been, he's been really good. Mars is so, so good. Both of them had a goal and assist the other night. I mean, they're, they're a scary, scary team in the West. But that's the beauty of what's going on right now. Because I don't know. I do not know who the best team in the East is and who the best team in the West is. I can tell you who I like watching. I just don't know who it is just yet. That's playoffs. That's yep. what you really want. Every league I should think, want. I think the West in particular, I could make a case, every one, every one of those series, mm-hmm. that the lower seed could win that series. I, I Like, honestly, or higher, depending which way you're looking at it. Honestly, yes. I could make a case with every one right. of those series that you could see an upset in every one of those series. And I think that's pretty cool. Man, I love Florida. I, I love... Tampa, I, I don't want to say this is the last kick at the can. I, I, I think that's disrespectful to a team with a championship pedigree. But they're on the back nine. And, and Florida just coming at them with playoff hockey. And you got a guy like Carter Verhage that, you know, hey, listen, good player, but goals like this at the right time. I, I mean, all his overtime goals, his name amongst some of the greats to ever play the game. It, it's, man, it's been fascinating to watch that uh, hockey has been so good yeah F- florida being up three games to nine is a little surprising to me nashville winning in vancouver mm-hmm. surprised me a little bit i think vancouver is pretty damn good too uh quinn you should go right away but it's um that that's the beauty of it. every series you're like wow that's surprising matt kachuk two more goals I mean, he's just a tough son of a gun it, it's it's so much fun, Sean. And on top of that, and I know you're on top of this, Team USA wins yesterday 9 nothing in the U18. The reason I bring that up is because those are the guys you want to follow because they're going to be drafted at, at, in their age 18 year. Kid by the name of Iserman, no relation, spelled completely different, had a hat trick. USA hockey is incredibly powerful. I mean, Canada plays Sweden, which was a good game too. But the red, white, and blue in the sport of hockey, you should be really proud of it. Shep, we're, I, we're an international power. Shep, I was working I was working in the OHL for many years, as you know. And when the NTDP was starting to go like this, mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many people in, in the OHL said, what are those silly Americans doing? Okay. And this was a few years after it started. Yeah. But they honestly, I'm not joking. That was, that was the creed. What are those silly Americans doing? 20 years later, you have multiple nations in the world trying to follow that exact same U.S. Right. NTDP model. It is amazing to me um, what the U.S. NTDP has done. I was fortunate enough to work for them for a few years, just churning out players like Cole Iserman. And, and uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Year in. Year out, it is amazing how that works. Yeah, I, I had two buddies of mine who used to work for the Lions. They were Canadian. And when I would go on the road trips, uh, we would all get together on a Saturday night, watch college football, order some uh, strombolis and some pizzas and just sit and watch football, a bunch of us, right? And they used to shake their head and say, America, man, it just, they really pissed us off. And I said, what's wrong? Said, the one sport we had was hockey. And you guys, in just just a couple of decades, are suddenly among the best, if not the best in the world. 
Amazing. And it's amazing. It, it's really fun. It's really fun to watch. I love the rivalries of the USA, Canada, and Sweden. It's cool. Yeah. Sweden, Finland is something to behold. It, it yeah. really is. Like watching those two teams yeah. you know, doing the, the you know, um, some, some of the series that were out there, the Five Nations Cup, the Four Nations Cup, watching mm-hmm. Finland and Sweden in the same building, there's no love lost. It's no. pretty stinking cool. Hey, before we get out of here, Shep, uh, let me tell you about our friend, Lindsay Broadwell. If you are looking to buy, sell, whatever the case may be, I got the right person for you. There she is, Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up here on the main streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business. When it's time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and everything goes smoothly when finding your new home. Buyer, seller, first-time buyer, doesn't matter sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. That's Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. Uh, Shep, always a pleasure. I, I know it's been a busy 24 hours for you. Safe travel you home. Are you, are, you, are you heading home from uh, that beautiful casino up there? I am. I'll be heading home after I grab a quick flight. You bet. Good. Uh, hope you had a blast at Soaring Eagle. Always nice to see you. Let's catch up next weekend. Enjoy the weekend, my friend. All right, pal. Have a great barbecue and a great weekend. You got it. And for all of you out there, thank you so much for joining us. We will check back in probably Sunday night to recap the draft. For Matt Shepard, I'm Sean Belegian saying enjoy your weekend. We'll see you soon. Just-